I came here, we were quickly identified as a priority school in need of improvement. One of, I think, I mean, I, I don't, I think there are around 30, maybe upwards of 40 in the state who have been identified, and we were in the second cohort. And that's because our proficiency rates on the statewide tests back in 2010, if you take third grade as a barometer, um, only 17% of our third graders were proficient in math in 2010, according to the state tests, and only about, I want to say it was like 37% of our third graders were proficient in reading that same cohort. And so that's clearly, that's tough. That is nothing that, um, things weren't working. And so as the principal, um, we had to make a plan and the, that plan involved teachers, parents, and students about um, closing gaps, but not just achievement gaps, but equity gaps. I mean, we didn't even have wireless internet in the school in the fall of 2007. And so while we wrote for a school improvement grant, we simultaneously wrote to become the model school for blended learning. And we got, we got that grant. We co-wrote it with the Highlander Institute, and they really did a nice job um, giving our teachers professional development and us getting almost a half million dollars over the course of two years to populate the building with smart boards, devices, support from the district in getting us to go wireless um, with the E-rate bond. And it, the good things started to happen when we started to focus on our weakness, which was math. And so we started with just math, blended learning, station rotation model, direct instruction with the teacher's small flexible group based on data, independent station, kids are on um, laptops or an iPad, and then the collaborative station where they were working with each other and manipulatives to support or strengthen or build on whatever it was that they're working on. And so that's where we started and things rapidly, and the culture changed too. There became a culture of higher expectations and um, it was never about, the, I, I always said to the teachers, the test scores will take care of themselves if we change the way things are happening. And so if kids are engaged and happy in coming to school, um, they will want to learn more in and out of school. And test scores will continue to improve despite the barriers that are real that we face. And that's what happens. So we set our goals at like 3 to 4% increases each year and we started smashing those goals even the first year. Like the first year, the proficiency went from 17% in third grade in math proficiency up to 27, and then from 27% up to 35, and then from 35 up to 49. And so it was a consistent, um, that's just what we wanted to see, if not more. And then they changed the test, went from the kneecap test to the park test, and so kind of recalibrated. Um, and we saw great gains in, in ELA too, and so the teachers are the ones that started blending in ELA and differentiating instruction for ELA because it was working so well in math. And so I knew we would hit a wall at some point, and that really um, kind of motivated the shift from blended learning to personalized learning in first grade, I mean, not first grade. That, um, when, when I knew we'd hit a wall, that's what prompted the shift from blended to personalized learning in fifth grade.